Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's September 15th, and these are your headlines. First up, false albacore continue to dominate the hearts and minds of most anglers in southern New England. We're also hearing about a surprise shot of giant bluefin, and they're surprisingly close to shore in Rhode Island this week. And the canal has re-exploded. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. We are the Fish Bites Nation, and this is your invitation. So grab some fish bites and get busy casting, because you can't join the nation without doing the catching. So before we begin, we're just going to do a couple news items here. The first one is really just a reminder, and that is that this report is also available as a podcast. You can listen to it on iTunes. You can listen to it on Google Podcasts. Um, and then you can, you know, listen to me in your car or put your headphones in and pretend you're being productive at work. And in either case, you're going to find out what's going on this week in New England fishing. Other thing that's important to note, the Rhode Island Tog Classic is set for October 9th. This is a great cause. It's a Rhode Island only tournament. It's tog only, and it's just one day out of your life. It costs 100 bucks to enter, and it benefits a phenomenal cause. And that cause is the Three Angels Fund. They, they raise money to help families that are dealing with the emotional and financial hardships that come along with a cancer diagnosis. Great cause. I'll be participating this year. I will be there at the weigh-in, and um, it's definitely something you guys should check out. Uh, go to ritogclassic.com for more information. You can sign up there. You can make donations. You can also donate product to their massive raffle. Check it out, and uh, I hope to see you there. And last up, of course, is the contest, and we've got a few more great entries this week. We're giving away a Couches Cedar Works Giant Jetty Swimmer, the J2 size, in the fishiest color of all time, white. Um, and of course, you know, if you're not familiar with how the contest works, it's quite simple. Just go out there, catch the fish of your choice. I don't care if it's a sunfish or a giant bluefin. Uh, take a picture of yourself with the fish. It can be a selfie. It can be, you know, you can bring along a photographer, whatever you want. And then send them to me at deanderson at thefisherman.com or text them to the number on the screen. And I will pick my favorite. I think we're going to close this one out on October 7th. Uh, so I'll pick my favorite and uh, whoever... Whoever is my favorite will get that awesome plug. And that's what I have for you guys in the news briefs this week. I'm Captain Greg DeBrule of the party boat Blackhawk out of Niantic, Connecticut. You've seen us at the sports shows. You've seen us on TV, magazines, newspapers. Now you can come fish with us, okay? We're fast, we're clean, and we're comfortable. And besides that, we catch them. Ask around. Come visit us at BlackhawkSportFishing.com. We'll save a seat for you. So now let's head over to Massachusetts and we'll start things off with James Jukes. Hi Dave, up on Plum Island again, just getting ready to head out for the night. Uh, the weekend was not good. We had that hurricane hanging offshore a bit, even though it was close to a thousand miles out, completely affected all the fishing in our area. We had some surf that was reaching up towards eight, nine feet. Uh, tons and tons of weeds. It was just horrible fishing. Now, I did get out and find a little bit of clear water and did hit a few small fish, as well with some of the guys a little farther north and a little farther south. Uh, they found some clean water, then they found some fish. Uh, some of them were up to close to 20 pounds. Uh, nothing huge. Uh, but with the weather hopefully going to change a little bit here and the wind died down, the surf is still going. I can hear it in the background. Uh, should smooth out. And uh, hopefully our run didn't come to an end already with this. So uh, two years ago we had, three years ago we had Jose come through and early September and just destroyed the fishing for the whole season. Anyways, so back. Lots of bait. I was out on a boat on Sunday. Saw plenty of peanut bunger in the coves in and around the river mouths. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be some fish in those areas as well. So 
Got to get out, get to it. Uh, we can move over to the freshwater side. Mass trout stocking should be underway, if not now, very shortly. Uh, the guys up this way, Merrimack River, they've been doing well catching carp. Uh, some smallmouth in there as well. And then, of course, uh, on some of the other local ponds, they're banging out some largemouth bass. And uh, panfish is always fun as well, too, if you can get out and do that. Uh, other than that, that's it from Plum Island. I'm heading out now. Um, the offshore bite has also been firing up in the Gulf of Maine. We're hearing about some really big, fat uh, bluefin tuna up there. They're gorging on herring, and uh, the bite's been really good. Guys heading down along the coast now through Boston and into the Plymouth area. That bass bite there that's been going on for the last couple weeks is still going on. There's a decent number of fish in tight to the beach. Guys are getting it from the surf. Guys are getting them from the boats. They're getting them day and night. And, um, you know, most of these fish are, you know, around slot size, a few bigger ones than that. Uh, but this is definitely an area we want to keep an eye on, just like we were talking about last week. Uh, you probably remember that it really blew up in that area last year, and uh, we're getting right around that time now, so definitely keep an eye on that. Heading out onto the Cape, uh, a lot of guys are really focused on the offshore bite right now, that giant tuna fishery still going strong from the Sword and Crab Ledge all the way up to Stellwagen. Um, sounds like the better action is still at least the Chatham, you know, around Crab Ledge area, but um, a lot of guys getting out there and getting in on it, and uh, the fishing sounds like it's phenomenal. Uh, coming inshore now, not a lot of surf news this week from the outer beaches. I know that there's some fish out there being caught. I know there's been a few bluefish around as well, um, but everyone seems to be hyper-focused on Albies, and for a little bit on how to get that done, we're going to toss it over now to Ian from the Goose Hummock Shop. What's happening, people? Get your boy bags. Fresh off of Labor Day weekend. I had the last two days off, been living in the kayak. My back, I feel like I'm 96 because I've been out in there for like 17 hours straight in the yak, just tonging the albies. Absolutely loving it. I had a couple bones in there too. Probably 60 million bluefish, lost a bunch of lures, but what are you gonna do? I was loving every freaking moment of it. We're tight the whole dang time. So come in. I know Jake is doing 10% off all the pedal drives in the outdoor center. Score yourself one because that 10.6, none of the Albies in the last two days would have been landed if it wasn't for that thing. Thank you, Phil, for hooking me up. Um, the lures that I've been tonguing them on, we got two on the Island X top water. This thing casts like an absolute rocket. Super fun to get the top water blow ups on these Albies. Long cast Stinger Minnow, Island X as well, single hooks. Is great. Uh, you get into this bluefish with the one tr one single on here. It makes it really easy for your catch and release. So when albies are busting, you're not dealing with one of those jamokes. And then pink was absolutely crushing it yesterday for me. Um, over 15 albies in the last two days on the pink. A little bit bigger option if you're trying from the beach. And with the pink, some cool stepping outside the box. A little um, sand eel pencil from Savage Gear. This is a nice little chartreuse, I like that color. Forktail candies, the tsunamis, this nice little peanut. They were basically all peanuts yesterday. Go out there, get on them, get tight, get albies. Get out of here, people. Yeah. So as Ian was talking about, there's a lot of albies around, there's a few bonito around, and most of these fish are being caught in Nantucket Sound and Vineyard Sound. Um, the bite has been it's been up and down, you know, but there's a lot of fish in the area and you just got to get out there on the right day when they're really chewing and uh, things can be really good. Um, my counterpart, Dale Nicholson, was out there just a few days ago with uh, Captain Skip Bandini from Fish Bandit Charters and he's going to throw us a quick report right here. Thanks, Dave. Uh, on location actually from my house today, I uh, just got back from uh, Vineyard Sound, did some great albie fishing today with Skip Bandini from... Uh, fish band the charters great guy great boat had fish beautiful day and we beat the rain we beat the wind we beat everything uh this past weekend i was out in my boat yeah, again buddy. out in the race looking for blues for my smoker got fish up to 14 to 16 pounds absolutely ridiculous so we're ready to smoke a batch uh, and that's basically it for the weekend um been a great it's been great fishing everywhere so thanks again Dave, back to you, and smoke them if you got them. 
Guys that fish Massachusetts are probably aware at this point that the Vineyard Derby started over the weekend, and uh, we've got a report here from Derby headquarters. Thanks, Dave. It's John Custer from the Martha's Vineyard Striped Bass and Bluefish Derby. The Derby began this morning, and at morning weigh-in, we had all species weighed in. False albacore, bluefish, and bonito. And the bonito was caught from the shore, which was a great sign for the shore fishermen. About 1,500 people are already registered for the Derby. It lasts five weeks, so we have 34 more days of exciting fishing to come, and we expect well over 3,000 registrants by the time it's all said and done. So we had a great start this morning. The opening bell was rung by Derby Hall of Famer and island shore fishing legend, Steve Amaral. He rang the opening bell, which was great for him and a great way to kick off the Derby. So we're excited to start things. We appreciate the sponsorship from the fishermen and all the support from everyone who joins the Derby to support our efforts. We look forward to the Bonita fishing picking up. Recent reports in the last few days have been promising. Albacore fishing is strong and the bluefish are here. So the fishing's good. We hope for continued good weather and we look forward to an awesome five weeks. I'll check in with you again soon. Uh, Albies are definitely leaking through into Buzzards Bay now. There's a lot of bait in the area and uh, we're starting to hear about more concentrated schools in Buzzards Bay. Some of them have made their way up into the canal as well. Um, another thing that you're going to probably start to see in Buzzards Bay now is more stripers showing up. There's been good charges of fish coming through the canal and you know that's where they got to go. They got to come out into Buzzards Bay so um, that should, if that hasn't already started, that should be happening anytime now. Um, the canal has had an up and down week. A lot of the a lot of the stuff I heard from you know late last week and into the weekend was kind of up and down, but it's fired up a lot since then. And uh, even early this week, we've heard about a lot of nice fish showing up in the canal. For a little more on that, let's toss it over to East End Eddie. Dave, it's been a great morning here in the canal. Uh, four blitzes in a row, about five ten minutes apart. Uh, Bluefish and stripers just ripping up the surface, starting at quarter past six to about seven. And then after the four blitzes, there was some more fish breaking that I wouldn't characterize as a blitz, but it's just been an unbelievable day here. And um, a lot of bait still in the canal, a lot of uh, peanut bunker and silver sides. And uh, guys in the West End have been doing well at Mass Maritime and uh, the Combat Zone and also at the uh, Bell Road. And I was at uh, Bourne Scenic Park yesterday, right in the shadow of the Bourne Bridge. And I, I caught, caught a 29-inch uh, 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 bluefish. But the interesting thing about it was I was using a Bill Hurley white canal killer and uh, it, with the, the soft plastic jig with the uh, paddle tail. And the bluefish bit the tail right off. It bit it right in half, which is not unusual. It bit it right below the hook. But the unusual thing is after he bit it in half, he came back for a second bite, and that's when I hooked him. So uh, Bill Walsh has recovered from his operation, and he's... Uh, fishing uh, the canal and, and catching uh, slots and, and bluefish. And uh, he's using an Astori, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, Astori or Astori. The uh, Patrick Sabil uh, Band of Anglers company puts it out. And Patrick uses all top quality components, rings and hooks and everything. So uh, Bill's doing very well with that, that lore. And here's a nice story. 12 year old Nick Terizakis uh, fishes with his dad, uh, Annis, they're from Connecticut. And um, Nick is a, already a veteran fisherman. He started when he was three years old. He's already mastered Montauk and Shinnecock Inlet and um, and comes here quite often with his father. So he caught a slot fish the other day on a Donnie Meyer custom pencil and uh, he's, he's a great kid and he's the future of our sport. So congratulations to Nick. And um, moving down the canal uh, uh, to the fish pier, the state pier, uh, Hawkeye uh, Willis was catching some slots and he also caught uh, some small bonito. People thought that some people thought they were uh, mackerel, but they were really bonito. You, they don't call them Hawkeye for nothing. So, uh, and then uh, at uh, Pip's Rip, Bill on the grill, Prudo, caught a 35 inch bluefish that was estimated to weigh over 12 pounds. He was using a, a combo jig that he put together himself, soft plastic jig. And across from him, uh, down the way, a little way uh, at the end of the canal, in the East End at Murphy's uh, Beach. John Doble uh, got into um, a, a mix of bluefish and slots. And John said that he was using his white stick shed very effectively. And, and, and John said that uh, some of the bluefish were pretty big, up to 14 pounds. So big bluefish are still patrolling the East End. 
And uh, the other day I was fishing at pole 155 and I witnessed a tragic incident. I had just uh, reeled in a, uh, a slot fish on a surface bite and uh, I looked to my left and I saw a man jump off the Sagamore Bridge and hit the water. And the east tide carried him away from my position but when the uh, helicopter and the search boats showed up, to, uh, they couldn't find his body. So uh, something like that makes you appreciate what you have and be grateful that we're here in the canal wedding a line in a beautiful place. Um, whatever was troubling him, may he rest in peace. So my tip of the week it comes from great outdoors writer Charlie Soares, who I've uh, had an opportunity to fish with a couple of times at Sakana, at his home base on his river skiff. And um, that's the bridge going down. And uh, so uh, Charlie told me, I think one of the first casts I made when I was with him, when I reeled it in, it had, um, had seaweed on it. And before I could take the seaweed off, Charlie told me, Eddie, get that seaweed off your, off your hooks. Fish don't eat vegetables. So until next week, be safe and catch a big one. Um, yeah, some definitely a, definitely a tragic story there, Eddie. And I uh, really appreciate you passing that on. And it definitely does make you you know, feel thankful for what we have. Uh, Roy Leva is not available for a freshwater report this week. From what I've seen uh, between social media and the freshwater fishing that I've done this week, the largemouth bass are feeding very heavily right now. They're definitely starting to feel that urgency. Um, we're getting those cold nights now and they're starting to try to bulk up for the winter. And that's what I have for you guys in Massachusetts this week. Moving over into Rhode Island is where it really seems to be Alby Central right now. Um, it doesn't matter if you're in the east end of the state or the extreme west end of the state, there are Albies to be caught. The epicenter definitely seems to be like Point Judith or just west of Point Judith right now, but you can catch them anywhere. Guys are getting it from shore, kayak, paddleboard, boat, you name it. Um, and there's been a few Bonito around as well. A lot of bait and uh, just a lot of guys excited to get it done. Albie snacks definitely seem to be leading the charge with uh, successful anglers, but all methods are getting fish, and uh, still hearing about some really nice fish. Some fish in that eight to 10 pound class are, uh, are being caught, seems like every day. Um, the other thing that's been really exciting in Rhode Island is this bluefin tuna thing. They just kind of showed up, you know, just a few miles off Point Judith, uh, but someone who knows a lot more about that than I do is Captain John Lee from JL Charters. Um, fishing out of Point Judith the past week or so, um, I, the, the biggest buzz in town is definitely the giant tuna bite um, off Point Judith. I was out sea bass fishing four days ago and marked giant tunas on my sea bass spot. Um, these fish have been here for, for actually quite a few weeks. But maybe three days ago, there was an unprecedented giant tuna bite um, very close to shore. Um, in with these giants are, there's thresher sharks and mako sharks. Um, it's just wild. And um, the funny thing is, that almost is the best fishing in town. Um, my sea bass, my, the sea bass bite is a little slow. Blackfish hasn't quite gotten going. Albacore is hit or miss. Stripers is hit or miss, and yet there's 800 pound tunas. So I don't, I don't, I'm not in that fishery, but I, the buzz is, is fun. I live vicariously through friends who are catching these things. And um, I think the ecology of what's going on, why are they here? Are they feeding on squid? Are they feeding on, uh, there's a lot of baby weak fish around. Um, there's a lot of small 10-inch snapper blues out there, um, but there's no sand deals. There's, I haven't heard of many uh, Menhaden schools. So what are these fish doing there? What are the Makos doing there, the Threshers? It's just, I think it's pretty interesting. Anyway, that's all I got. Take care. Now, another thing that we're hearing is that the bottom fishing kind of took a hit this week. Probably had more to do with the fact that the full moon was rushing through than anything else. We've got faster tides and just making it tougher to fish on these fish that are in deep water. But one bottom fish that's definitely uh, kind of coming into its own right now is the blackfish. Guys are getting them from shore, boat, kayak. Um, they're in shallow water right now. You're still weeding through a lot of shorts, but there are some, there's some much nicer fish being taken. Haven't heard of a double digit yet, but I know that's only a matter of time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's that time of year, it's the fall, and, uh, you know, that's when the black vision really tends to get awesome. Just got to watch those regulations. Don't forget that they changed that to 
you know, you can only keep one trophy fish and it's 10 fish per boat. Even if, you know, even if there's five guys on there, you don't all get to keep your limit. It's 10 fish for boats. So just make sure you check that before you head out there. Um, but that the tog fishing is really firing up now as we head west into, well, as we head west into South County, definitely hearing about increased striper action. There's still a lot of bluefish in the area. The chub max seem to be mostly gone. Um, the breachways are producing very well. Guys are getting, you know, a lot of slot fish, a few fish over, and uh, decent numbers of bluefish as well. We're also hearing about a lot of small weak fish being caught um, really all along that area. Um, one thing that I did forget to mention is that back over in the Newport area seems to be where the epicenter for larger bass are right now. Uh, Block Island seemed like it slowed down a little bit this week, but uh, still good numbers of like 20 to 30 pound fish being taken around, um, you know, around the Newport area and over into Narragansett. Uh, so that's definitely the area you want to focus on if you're looking for a big bass. And that's what I have for you guys in Rhode Island this week. Over in Connecticut, Albi fever has finally crossed the border. Um, a good number of fish crossed into eastern Long Island Sound over the last couple days. And we're hearing about them being caught around fishers. We're hearing about them being caught all along the shore from the Thames. I don't know if they've made it quite to the Connecticut River yet, but then landfall there is imminent. And, you know, the hysteria has hit and it's go time. Uh, so that's one thing that guys are really excited about, and that's only going to, you know, become more and more of a big thing over these next couple weeks as more fish move in. Um, but it's great to see them crossing over the border. Bass fishing still been very good. I haven't heard much from fishers. I don't know if that's a, you know, brown shark hysteria thing or what it is, but I haven't heard much from the fishers island area. But along the coast from, you know, really from Bluff Point all the way out to the Connecticut River and beyond, uh, good numbers of bass. Seems like the best bass fishing is happening between Niantic Bay and the Connecticut River. Uh, some really nice fish being taken in that area. Some, some decent sized bluefish in the mix as well. For a little more on that, let's toss it over now to Mike Roy for Real Cast Charters. Hey, what's up guys? Uh, for this week's Fisher Report, the fall run is underway. There's a lot of striped bass and bluefish feeding on the surface. They've been feeding heavily on peanut bunker and butterfish. Remember when you come across these blitzes in the fall, Look at your electronics because often the top water feed is just the tip of the iceberg and there's a lot more fish under uh, holding uh, tighter to the bottom. Uh, most of the reefs throughout Long Island Sound now have some kind of fish on them and vertical jigging, small diamond jigs and small jigs like the uh, Shimano current sniper jigs have been working really well. Um, there are some hardtails, false albacore and bonita around. Not a lot in Long Island Sound yet, but there are a few kicking around so be prepared keep a lookout for them uh, the bottom fishing has improved the black sea bass fishing has been pretty good and the keeper short ratio has improved so you have a lot of options right now good luck folks don't miss the fisherman's fishing show and seminar thursday september 22nd at the long island hilton hotel and convention center starts at 6 p.m hey the first 200 people receive a goodie bag with everything you see here and if you're one of the early bird arrivers the first 100 are going to get a super strike custom lure made specially for this show now the next 200 receive everything you see here in a goodie bag the next 100 receive everything you see here and with over a hundred vendors, some seminars from the greatest authorities in fishing, like Dave Marciano and the Fisherman's Gray's Fish Tag Research Seminar, you're going to have an excellent night here and at nine o'clock, the largest raffle that we've ever done. Don't miss it, folks. Thursday, September 22nd, the Huntington Hilton. As we head west from there, uh, the bass fishing and the blue fishing is holding on quite nicely from the Connecticut River out to Six Mile and really all the way out to New Haven. Um, guys are doing very well on slot size stripers, a few, you know, just over the slot. Um, decent numbers of bluefish, all mixed sizes, plenty of snappers around in the uh, backwaters as well. Um, another thing that's really starting to fire up now, even though it's been good all summer, is the porgy fishing. We're starting to see a lot more bigger fish now, and they seem to be piling up on some of those mid-depth reefs now, you know, 20 to 30 to 40 feet, and uh, really great catches of those being reported. As we head further west, we're going to toss it over now to Max from Fisherman's World to hear what he's got to say on the matter. There's been room of some Albies locally. I would check places like 11B, Mid Sound, Stratford Shoals, and across the pond, places like Smithtown Bay, Crane's Neck, and Port Jeff. I haven't seen any confirmed catches, but I've heard from a couple people they thought they saw them. 
this is a time of year where they really start flooding in. So get ready and uh, good luck chasing those speed demons. The striped bass bite is really picking up now. Uh, 11B is still hot in the outgoing and 28. And then inside the islands and on the backside, we've seen a lot of like schoolies, slots, and some overslot. I got out uh, last week after work, quick little plug-in session, and like my second fish was 37, 38 inches on a spook. So the fishing's been really good. It should just get way better leading into the fall. There are still tons of bluefish around the same spots. 11B, I would say, has a uh, better concentration. And then <clears throat> the fluke fishing, it's still so-so. I mean, there's definitely guys getting fluked and they're catching keepers. They're just, you know, you're working really hard. So I would try bumping in a little shallower now. Like, you know, leave these deep spots, get in these shallow spots with all this small bait around. You know, you really got to pound the air. It's like 26, 24, and even inside the islands now. Porgy fishing is still red hot. You can still catch them from the beaches, the wrecks, the deep water wrecks. And the black sea bass are still concentrating on our deep water wrecks. We won't see them, you know, really moving inshore heavy until around blackfish opener. Thanks and good luck. Thanks, Max. Great report as always. And to wrap things up in Connecticut, we're going to toss it over to Rowan Little and hear what's going on with those lesser utilized fish that we have here in New England. Hey, Dave. Unfortunately, Noah can't be with me today. He has COVID. Uh, fortunately, he's not too, too sick, not very symptomatic, but I is testing positive, so he's staying away from me. Um, but Things are going pretty good on the freshwater front still. There is phenomenal carp fishing to be had. Carp really put a feeding pinch on as it gets later in the fall and, and the water temperatures start to start to drop, which they are. We're having nighttime temperatures in the 50s and that starts to bring the water temps down as they start to get into the 70s in the places where they were in the 80s and the 60s in the places where they were in the 70s. The fish in those waters really get fired up and start putting on the feed bag before it gets too cold. So if you want to get on some carp, especially if you want to do so with fly and light tackle and artificial lures, now is the time. There's a lot of them packing into the shallows and really putting the feed bag on. You know, look in places that have a mud bottom or some gravel bottom and uh, lots of macroinvertebrates. Those are the kinds of places that carp will root around looking for uh, anything they can grub out. Crayfish, dragonfly nymphs, cranefly larvae, things of that nature. Lately, I've been doing very well with flies that have a worm component to them, be it a tail or just the whole thing, whether it's a San Juan worm or a squirmy worm hybrid or something like that. Uh, those flies have really been crushing it. Artificial jigs have also been working pretty well. Uh, get out there, get on some carp. And last up, we're going to take a long flight down to Costa Rica and hear what's going on fishing-wise down in Marina Pez Vela. Hey there guys, checking in from the Marina Pez Vela here in Costa Rica. This week's fishing report mainly is all about tuna. We've had some really nice yellowfin tuna fishing offshore 30 to 40 miles from the marina. We've had some really nice tuna in the 30 to 50 pound category with some 100 pound plus fish also. There's been some wahoo over the offshore reefs, blue marlin and sailfish also. Closer to shore, we've had quite a lot of rain in the last couple of weeks, so our water is pretty murky, but we've still had some nice rooster fish fishing. There's some good roosters in the 30 to 40 pound range being caught, plus other species such as snappers, mackerel, and jacks. We'd love to see you guys down here in Costa Rica. Back to you guys. And that's what I have for you guys in the reports this week. Hopefully you find them useful. Um, as I say every week, if you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman, I highly recommend you head over to thefisherman.com and check out what we've got going on there. There's lots of free content there. You can get a full spread of what we offer. Freshwater, saltwater, offshore, fly fishing, surf fishing, and all the stuff in between. Um, just about every species you can think of is covered. It's the best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing. But at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube and hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification every time we post something new. Appreciate you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week. With the days growing shorter and temperatures starting to cool down, the fishing will get red hot. And with this trend comes our first tog entry into the Dream Boat Challenge. 
Andre Ledo from Beckett, Mass, weighed in this 9.66 pound tog, making it the first tog entry of the season, which obviously puts him in the first place tog category with 10 points. And here are our current top four positions. We have first place Rob Carrizano, second is Dean Paella, third Sam Dibner, and fourth Garrett Weir. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a new Steiger Craft 23 Miami powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. Hey, everybody, it's Dave Anderson. I just want to give you a quick rundown of what's going on with the Coastal Kayak Clash. After two weeks without an entry, we finally have some new fish on the board, both of them in the hardtail category. The first one is a 15 and a half inch Benito, entered by Tom Hode. And the second is a 25-inch Albi, entered by none other than tournament leader, Justin Osa. That extends his tournament leading score to 12. Bob Wagner is in second place with 5 points, and Paul Sanford is holding down third place with 3 points.